Hello, kia ora. G'day, I'm Philip Duncan from Weather Watch TV on YouTube with your Australasia Climate Watch update recorded on the 1st of September and brought to you by ruralweather.co.nz. Well, let's get into it because spring is turning up for southern parts of Australia and around New Zealand. Windy westerly is kind of defining that and a number of cold fronts are on the way. It's a lot more westerly driven for the New Zealand area than it's been. For Australia, larger areas of high pressure in the mix. Let's have a look for September 1st. And so basically this is the misery index. It shows you in blue temperatures that are zero and below, which you can see around parts of New Zealand, Southern Ocean and Tasmania, and the areas in red, which are 30 degrees and above. So it looks pretty normal for this time of the year. The warm is where it should be, the cold is where it should be, and everyone else in the middle temperate. It's not too hot, not too cold. Let's have a look at the climate highlights. I've got a few words and then we'll show you the maps. Australia, sea surface temperatures going back to July, not August, but July, half a degree above normal. That's the warmest July since 1900. Globally, July from a sea surface temperature point of view, the third warmest on record. Now in August, temperatures were warmer than average across much of Australia, despite some cooling, which is occurring in the Coral Sea and some northern parts of Australia. In New Zealand, the sea surface temperatures continue to go up in the month of August. Nearly half of the country has a strong marine heat wave in a couple of pockets, like around Kaitaia on the coastal side, obviously, and down around Fiordland and Stewart Island. Those places are also seeing a severe marine heat wave in New Zealand. As far as El Nino is concerned, we're still in neutral. Uh, there is still that chatter that we might be going into it in spring for a time, uh, but the Bureau of Meteorology feels pretty confident it's not going to be turning up this year. The Indian Ocean, that's their version of La Nina and El Nino, also neutral, but there's a bit of talk now that it might start to go to an IOD negative. That produces a bit more rain over on the western side, but it's also worth point pointing out that it's likely to return to neutral by summer. So that's what you would call a bit of a blip rather than a major thing. And in the Southern Ocean, things down there at the moment, uh, the Southern Angular Mode known as SAM neutral, which means the storms, or sorry, it's positive at the moment, which means the storms are down next to Antarctica, shifting to neutral soon, kind of normal weather basically for this time of the year, south of New Zealand and Australia. And you can see it here on the first week of September, the first day showing air pressure. Red is high pressure, blue is low pressure. So this is pretty uniform. Big storms down where they should be, high pressure coming back in over Australia and to the north of the country. So halfway between high pressure and low pressure, that's where you get the squash zone, wind blowing through. And that is the windy westerly that you see with the arrow. So that is dominating the New Zealand area, also Tasmania, southern parts of, south, of Western Australia, and also around Victoria Bass Strait. So a lot of places caught up in these big storms, which are normal for this time of the year. And as these high pressure systems expand, puts a lid on how far those storms can go. And that lid creates the windy stuff. And that's why we're seeing windy westerlies across New Zealand for the start of September. And certainly we did for the end of August. Nothing really changes too much this week. Although there is a brief pause in the windy weather around about Wednesday in New Zealand. Let's go to week two now. So a large high pressure zone coming out of Australia. Uh, that is producing a warm nor'wester coming through, but there is also this low worth monitoring to the north. We've got two highs very close to each other, and the one that's over the Tasman Sea, pushing out east of New Zealand, trying to join up with the other high. And I've said this analogy before, two big high pressure systems can look like raindrops uh, dropping down on the glass, and when they touch, forms into one new raindrop and drifts off very quickly. Highs can do the same. So these two might merge, which would stop that low from drifting into the country. But if they don't, just worth keep monitoring that one as we go into the first weekend of September and the second week. The other system coming through in South Australia, or the southwestern side of Australia, I should say, is going to be this next cold front for Western Australia. And that will move over to South Australia uh, as we go through the second week. But warm northerlies and northwesterlies are ahead of it. So that's what we mean by spring-like. Warm and windy northerlies one day, thunderstorms, cold front, windy and cold the day after, and then you swing back to that warm and settled and warm and windy all over again. And we go through to the middle of the month and you're still seeing this line of high pressure all along these northern areas. And that is going to carry on as we go through this month, uh, keeping these stormy uh, systems further to the south. The further north the highs go, the more likely you are to see low pressure going northwards. That's a little bit what we see here by the middle of the month. More low pressure producing windy westerlies, not necessarily big wintry blasts. Most of that is down 
in this area. And the high pressure zones keep the north fairly settled, but there could still be some downpours and thunderstorms, certainly around parts of Queensland and New South Wales. We'll show you that in a moment. The other feature, uh, we're talking about La Nina, you know, high pressure up around Fiji, not very La Nina-like. So it's pretty calm, easterly winds. This is normal weather for these parts uh, up towards the tropics for this time of the year. But we're certainly seeing some unsettled weather around southern parts of Australia, southerly winds here coming in for New Zealand in the middle of the month due to that next big high. Let's get into soil moisture, starting with New Zealand. This is where we were in July. Here's how we are in August. Not a great deal of change. Uh, August was actually quite a good balancing act for New Zealand, both temperature and rainfall. Uh, temperatures were down in August in many places. Rainfall was down as well. Uh, but the start of winter in New Zealand was wet and mild in a number of places. So the balancing act has occurred around New Zealand. Hawke's Bay is still the only area that stands out as being dry. And obviously that's not all of Hawke's Bay, just one part further uh, to the south and central areas. Here is Australia's soil moisture map, the root zone soil moisture. Look at Western Australia. Uh, some areas of it wetter than average, other parts drier. But Western Australia jumps out as being perhaps a bit more extreme. But just about everybody else, nothing really jumping out as being alarming. Although the blue here in New South Wales and the blue that leans into the southeast corner of Queensland certainly aligns with the comments that we get on YouTube for that part of the world uh, where there has been a lot of cloud and wet weather over the past few months. Sea surface temperatures now. Let's have a look at the global one in Australia. A lot of reds and pinks on the map. So that goes in line with what I said just before about global sea surface temperatures in July being the third warmest on record. So you see a lot of red around. Now the Parts of Australia that have seen some cooler sea surface temperatures around the north here, and also parts of the Coral Sea, more white in those places. But where you see the reds, that is slightly warmer or a few degrees warmer on the surface of the sea, which means if you've got a low pressure zone over the top of it or thunderstorms, it's got more fuel and energy for those rainmakers. And that's basically why we show you these maps. Here is the closer view of New Zealand, certainly a number of areas warmer than average around the country, only off the coast of Kaikoura where the whales are, is it below normal. Everyone else is leaning warmer than average. Here is the, uh, breaking it down a bit more simply for you with the heat wave intensity. So some areas are severe up here around the far north, down around Fiordland, Stewart Island. That means it's a few degrees above normal. Many other places in the orange that are showing you the strong marine heat wave and those in yellow, the moderate. So the cooler area that I just showed you around the central eastern part of New Zealand. I dare you to go for a swim in the warmer areas and tell me if it feels warmer. All right, let's have a look at the rainfall. Big picture to start with, showing the South Pacific as well. If we go with Australia to begin with, the areas of rain here around inland areas, the outback of New South Wales and Queensland and parts of the Northern Territory, even South Australia, those are caused by downpours and thunderstorms that are forecast. Now, like any thunderstorm, uh, they can move around a bit, and some of those are two weeks out. So I wouldn't 100% lock that in, but what it is showing you is there is some instability inland on the eastern side of Australia that could produce some rainfall. The heaviest stuff on the western side of the mountains and ranges around the border of New South Wales and Victoria on the western side, also around Tasmania, mostly on the western side, but some of you in the northeast getting 100 millimeters there as well. And the southwest corner also seeing a number of cold fronts in Western Australia driving in, you know, the rainfall, the thunderstorms, and obviously some temperature swings. Into the tropics, it's Tonga uh, that's seeing the heaviest rain, 100 millimetres there, and further up around Samoa. Uh, but the real rain is over around the Solomon Islands. If La Nina forms, you'll be seeing more rain in this part of the map. So that's the area we'll be monitoring. If this starts to look a lot more concerning, that can then move on to other areas. But for now, high pressure in this zone, keeping tropical rain up in the tropics. Let's have a quick closer animation of Australia's rainfall coming through. It's a pretty quick one showing the next couple of weeks. Number of cold fronts swinging along the south here. Then you get these thunderstorms. And like I say, this could move around. That part there could still move around over the next couple of weeks. But a fair bit of energy coming through from the Southern Ocean, 100 millimetres in parts of Western Australia, 100 millimetres in parts of New South Wales and the border of Victoria, and also the purple here in Tasmania showing 100 millimetres. Uh, elsewhere, rainfall is not overly large and the dry season mostly carries on up in the tropics. Let's have a look at New Zealand's 16 day animation. Check out the West Coast. One big cold front after the other, piling up the rain. It is the wettest part 
in Australasia, basically if you just don't count the Solomon Islands area. Uh, we're seeing some very heavy rain here, two, three hundred millimeters or more falling over on the west coast. Pretty normal stuff. Some of that spills over to Southland, 80 to 100 millimetres there. Not great going into Lambing to be having rain and some of that cold airflow. And still plenty of showers coming into northern parts of the North Island and western areas. Anywhere from 60 millimetres to 100 millimetres over the next couple of weeks. Eastern areas are driest and that dry part of Hawke's Bay remains in a rain shadow. As we go through the next couple of weeks, very little rain falling around Napier and Hastings. And that is all from me. 16 day animation. I'm going to stick this on once I've finished talking so you can see it properly. Uh, but yeah, bit of energy moving through, some big highs, one or two of them dropping southwards, but most of those highs are further up into the north. And that is encouraging the windy westerly flow off and on around Australia and New Zealand. That's all from me for our Climate Watch update for this month. I'll see you again four weeks from now.